Hey everyone, it's Steve at the Forbes Family Farm and we wanted to do something a little different and share some information about preserving the harvest and some of the things that we do to preserve food that we've grown in our gardens and, and that we've raised. And we're gonna start off, I guess, big picture, there's a few different things that we do to preserve our harvest. Um, things that range from canning or bottling to um, freezing a lot of our, our produce um, and then another way that we do it right here is dehydrating and we found that dehydrating is one of our favorite ways and that's that's what we're going to start off sharing um, to, to preserve produce especially the thing that we really like about dehydrating is it's, it's very easy the dehydrating process relative to canning um, and even relative to freezing is is really low input on our end and so it's not a lot of time or effort um, it doesn't create a lot of heat like we get with canning and so this time of year it's nice to be able to dehydrate things and then it also um, is easy to use so depending on what the the crop is some crops you can really enjoy dehydrated things like apples and, and fruits that, that dry into like apple chips um, super easy because you just dehydrate it and then it's ready to eat you can store it in a bag or in jars and it's a nice snack just as it is. Other crops, um, we rehydrate when we use them and that still works really well because what, what dehydrating does is it allows us to store it so much more easily. Um, it worked, our freezers, we run out of space pretty quickly and so when we run out of space in the freezers, um, you know, we look for another easy way to preserve and an easy way to store and after we dehydrate things, we can often just put them into bags and, and store them dry or, or put them into bottles and various things like that. So this is our new dehydrator that, um, that we had family help us out with, with putting together. And it's, it's a smoker and dehydrator combined. So one half of the building is our smokehouse, which we may share a little bit more about cold smoking and curing when we get a little bit more experienced in it ourselves. That's probably the most um, dangerous and with respect to food safety um, process for preserving food is, is cold smoking and curing meats and so it's one that we've re we're researching a lot and we're really familiarizing ourselves with the techniques and practices and one we look forward to doing more this fall um, but the other half of this building is our solar dehydrator which we feel very comfortable with right now and the way that it works is you can see a solar collector here we just took an old window that we had on the property um, just an old single pane window and kind of framed it in and have a box that we painted the interior black and there's holes on the bottom that are basically air intake and then you can see kind of the the outlet holes that go into the actual dehydrating chamber and this is sealed pretty tight it's not absolutely perfect but it's pretty airtight so that what happens is the sun heats up this this chamber and the, the black interior absorbs the heat and, and holds it so that this chamber warms up and then you're just getting a natural pressure difference created by temperature change that creates a natural draw of air from the cool air outside and then moving it through the chamber and warming the air and then passing it into the, the dehydrating chamber itself. And so we've um, just that natural draw is, is what we're looking for. And it's the air movement that really makes the dehydrator work. It's not necessarily getting the air really hot and needing hot air to dehydrate. What you want is just air movement and, and dry air movement. And so what, that's what this, this process is doing and what the solar collector is doing. And we'll take you around the corner here and in the door to show you what it looks like on the inside. So on the inside, we've, we've simply added um, a few shelves and we may still do a little bit more to finish the interior of this but we've added shelves already so that we could get right to work using this. And all that we have is some shelves and then some hooks so that we can, we can have things that we put on shelves or some things like these flowers we're able to hang. Um, and again, what we're getting is there's an exhaust right in the peak of the roof. And so air is coming in down at the bottom off of the solar collector and then moving up and exhausting out of the roof. And that draw, that air movement is what's creating the environment for dehydration. And, we have a few crops in here that, um, a few that we just put in this morning and others that have been in for a few days. These squashes have been in for a few days and are, are almost ready to come out. Um, some of the thin pieces are, are dried adequately already. Um, just a few of the thicker ones we're waiting on to, to finish drying. And the, the squashes are an example of a crop that it's really not 
great to just eat them as, as dried squash. They're something that we are preserving with the intention of rehydrating. And so as we get into the winter, we'll use these squashes a lot in soups and things like that when we're really making a lot of soup and be able to um, just chop the dried or even break up the dried squashes and then add them into the soup and they rehydrate and they, they maintain their flavor and they even become a little more sweet than they are just as, as fresh fruit. And so um, a really nice way to preserve squashes and things of that nature. Um, we'll also do that sometimes with um, some leafy greens and things like that. You can dehydrate things like kale, spinach, and then rehydrate, you know, they dry into chips and then you can add them to soups to rehydrate them. And it's a nice way to keep those fresh vegetables in your diet as you're moving through the, the winter season. We also have some apples and tomatoes that we just put in here. And the apples, again, are something that will dehydrate. And then we often just are able to enjoy just as they are as apple chips um, because they, they retain their sweetness and are just really delicious, fresh dried as apple chips. Tomatoes are another crop that you can, um, they're, they're nice as, as just fresh dried tomatoes. But what we usually do is then once they're dried, um, put them in, in cans and cover them in olive oil, which then is, is a way to kind of impart moisture back into the, the fruit again, while keeping it something that will be shelf stable um, throughout the winter. And then that's a really nice crop that we can use in things like pasta sauces or, or um, mixed into salads and various dishes, again, when tomatoes are out of season through the winter. So that's an intro to, to dehydrating. Um, we've done a lot of different things with dehydrating. We've dehydrated um, meat into jerky in the past and things of that nature. We look forward to trying some of that in here as well as the season goes on. But dehydrating is such an easy way and, and such a, a nice way to preserve the harvest and make it so that we can store things on shelves as opposed to having to take up all of our freezer space and without all of the heat and the burden that comes with canning. So. We'll share more um, with canning and freezing and some of the things that we do um, to preserve the harvest in those ways. But if you've never tried dehydrating, whether you get an electric dehydrator or you simply build something real small, depending on your climate, if you're in the West, um, like we are, quite oftentimes it's so arid that almost all you need is um, a way to keep bugs or rodents away from the crop and, and keeping them outside. And that may be all you need in order to be able to dehydrate adequately and keep that harvest available throughout the winter season. So thanks, and we look forward to having you follow along as we share more about preserving the harvest. All right, the picture's done, Lil.